this time of the year, um, you know, you always want to look for shallow cover, especially when the fish are uptight and in and around um, spawning areas. You know, we're in the back of a cove right now. You can see the, a lot of laydowns and so forth, and you know the frog works really well uh, in, in wood like that. I mean, you can just imagine the fish are just sitting right up underneath there, you know, and making make a nice skip way up underneath the, the limbs, and just kind of crawl on the bait back through the woods like that. And fish, they just can't stand it. They come out and clobber it. That's usually where you're going to catch a big one. Is, is something where you got a nice big willow tree, big laydown in there, and whenever I'm approaching something like this, I always try to get it way back in there, way back underneath the hardest place to, to reach. And it's just a matter of skipping it way back in there and getting it five, six feet and at the base of that tree. And that, that's where that big one's gonna be sitting at. And then you just sit there and just tease them. You dare them. You dare them to come out and, and try and grab the bait. Frog's not gonna get hung up, so you don't have to worry about it. You're just gonna keep a low, a low, tra low trajectory when you're skipping it, keep the, the line close to the water to where it doesn't, it's not laying over the limbs. And you keep that bait walking all the way through the, through the wood. You usually make about five, five or six casts in there, you know, just trying to, trying to figure out where they're at in there. Because you know there's, there's gonna be one in there. Just kind of crawl it through there. Just you know, you don't want to get too too worked up coming through the limbs and stuff. You just kind of want to work it real slow through there. Because if you start yanking on and pulling at it, it's going to wrap around the limb and, and get caught and mess up the mess up the the whole tree. You know, you don't want to disturb what's going on up there. Now you can come back down, you know, back through here and, and uh, you know flip it or you know do whatever. But I always like to go through with a frog first and have it just walking through the woods down in there. It looks so natural, and for the bass, it's just a, you know, they just, they feel so comfortable going up and getting it. It's just an awesome way to fish. So don't be afraid to throw the frog up in there. You can see it's as weedless as, as it can be. It's not going to get hung up in the, in the bushes. And one of these times you're going to catch a big bass doing it. There he is. Got him. Oh, I watched him come out and grab it right on the tree. Awesome, look at that. Folks, look at this. Look where that frog's at. Just look at that. Ate the killer gill. Ate it up. Watched him come out of the tree to grab it. Awesome. That's where you want to catch him, just like that, all the time. Right on the top of the roof of the mouth. Comes right out. Beautiful bass. On the king. The original bronze eye frog. It's awesome, man. Oh, I love frog fishing. Love it. Absolutely love it. We got ideal conditions right now for, to, for throwing the frog just because we have a, it's overcast, it's kind of dreary. Um, there's thunderstorms you know, north and south of us. Just to, we're right in the middle of a, of, a, of a low pressure area. And man, when it's, when it's like that, the fish are, get really aggressive, especially this time of the year when the water temperature's in the mid 60s. Fish are up shallow, moving around. It's just, man, the frog just really excels uh, in conditions like that. There he is, got him. As you can see, we're just catching the heck out of him. Oh, my bronze eye again. Look at that fat little dude right there. Like I said, we got I ideal conditions right now and uh, just catching bass after bass after bass on my bronze eye. The killer guild color is becoming one of my favorite colors to throw. Just looks awesome in the water coming through there. Catching beautiful largemouth like that. That's awesome, man. God, I love frog fishing. It's the best. <laughs> frog fishing is my favorite thing to do, I tell you. You know, it's, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the tackle that we're using here. Um, basically, it's my, it's my setup that I use all the time when I'm frog fishing. Um, I got my Tour Rojas rod, my Quantum PT, it's my frog rod, uh, seven foot medium heavy action with a fast tip, uh, matching it up with an XL PT Quantum reel, nice and light, lots of power, and uh, with a drag all the way locked down. The reason why I have the drag locked all the way down is I don't want to give the fish any chance of getting away. Got some FX2 Dean Rojas Series flipping and frog and braid, best stuff on the market. Uh, I use 80 pound. Um, you can use 60, you know, or 50, whatever you you, you prefer. But I, I don't want anything to 
um, I don't have any failures. Not that it's going to fail, but I, I feel real comfortable with that 80. It casts really nice. I can get good distance, and I can have enough power to, to drive the hook into the into my favorite frog, the original, the bronze eye, the best on the market. It's 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 tried and true, and, and man, I just we have a brand new color called the Killer Gill. It's becoming one of my favorite colors to throw. As you can see, we use a tri-color skirt on the back back there. We have some purple, some blue, and some black. Well, it's kind of a, a brownish um, color. Uh, but man, this is with a four-aught gamagatsu, double palomar on the on the on the uh, on the knot. I mean, just look at all the teeth marks on that dude on the bottom of the frog. I mean, look at that. He's been mauled. We've been having a great time up here at, at the uh, Spro Gamagatsu Big Bite Riders Conference, catching a lot of fish on the frog and, and we got ideal conditions right now with the uh, overcast just having a great time out here frogging whenever you make a cast like that into the cover um, you really this is where the rod really comes into play because the rod is going to you know give the action to the bait itself this is my Tor Rojas rod it's the, my frog rod that I designed for quantum the neat thing about it it's got a really fast tip where it enables me to walk the frog back and forth through the cover and all we're doing is we're sashaying it back and forth. And what we're doing is we're teasing the bass, trying to, trying to get out, and get him to come out and, and grab the bait. The rod has a fast tip on it. It allows me to go ahead and, and you know, basically I'm just shaking the slack. I'm not actually, you know, sh shaking the bait. I'm just, I'm twitching the slack, which is causing the bait to walk back and forth. Because when you shake the slack, when the bait goes, there's no tension. So it wants to walk back and forth real easy. When, and whenever you get it close to, you know, a, a limb or a tree or, or something that, you know, it's just sitting there by itself, you really want to just kind of pause it and let it sit there and give that bass every opportunity to come out and grab the bait. You're daring them. You're daring them to come out and grab it. Makes for exciting fishing. It keeps you on, on, on the edge the whole, the whole day, you know, especially when you're fishing around cover like this. But it's so important on the rod, you know, to have the right action because there's so many medium heavy action rods out there that don't have the fast tip. And I'm going to, show, I'm going to demonstrate the fast tip uh, on the rod itself. You can see the bend is all within, you know, 15, 18 inches on, on, the, on the top here. And that allows me, you know, obviously to work the bait, but also for skipping too. It's like a shock absorber every time the bait hits the water. And then the rest of the, the rod is backbone. It's just meat. You know, that's where, that's where you get the power to pull them out of the, out of the, the trees or the grass or, you know, the, the tules or reeds. And it's just, it's just a perfect setup, nice and light. Match it up with a 7.3 gay ratio XLPT reel made by Quantum. Super light, super fast, and super strong. The knot that I use uh, when, I'm, when I'm frogging uh, is called a double palomar. And basically, it's, it's your regular Palomar knot, but we're going to run uh, the FX2 braid all the way through there again. So we're going to have four strands in there instead of the two. So now we have four strands of, of FX2 Sunline at the very nose of the frog itself. Then we're going to go in, do our overhand knot. We don't want to cinch it down too, too much. Take the, the ring, put the bait through the ring. Okay, so now we're, we're, le we're left with a, with a tag in. And basically, all you want to do is pull on the, on the tag in. And so, sometimes you got to use the pliers because it, 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 it wants to bind up on you. So we'll take the pliers and cinch it down. And now you've got a more than 100% knot. You've got four strands of FX2 in there that's not going to break, uh, a knot that's not going to slip. And it's what I use all the time when I'm frogging. All right. Very nice. Well, that's something you don't catch very often. Spot a bass on my bronze eye frog. Awesome. You know, this is uh, this is really neat uh, because you know we're fishing here in the springtime, but basically. You can fish this frog 12 months out of the year, you know, uh, depending on the part of the country where you're from, um, you know, the, they're, they're going to bite it. You know, you may only catch two pounders like that, but it's still a lot of fun. 
So just keep in mind that, you know, frogging is pretty much, depending on where you live, you, know, you can throw it eight months out of the year um, and have just as much fun as I am catching these bass right now. You can get the, the rod, the reel, obviously the, the bait. Have yourself a good time and go, and go frogging.